harbor seals. They're here from April 1st to December. The females come after the one alpha male who defends his pumping ledge by growling at anybody who gets near him. <laughs> it's fierce if you hear it. It's really like a snarl. I think I'm part seal because I can imitate it. <laughs> but that is the figure of a pregnant female seal who has arrived, and the only reason she's here is to have her pup and then nurse it and raise it so that it's going to survive on its own. And they give birth on the ledge? Is that what they do on the ledge? And they give the birth on the ledge, and sometimes on miscellaneous rocks around the bay by mistake, and all kinds of things can happen. By the, I mean, this is a complicated mammal giving its birth under hazardous conditions, and things go wrong. It can be a sickly mother, a sickly pup, uh, or some predator may disturb it. So. Sometimes the seals are abandoned, and that raises other issues. So, harbor seals of Taunton Bay, let's have at it. That's your basic view of what you generally see of a seal, and that's a pup in the distance, and all you can see is the eye sockets. But look at the curiosity. This is an intelligent mammal. It wants to know what's happening. Mm -hmm. Just like us. And that's a mother and a pup. And she takes him around the bay, showing him the ropes, or her the ropes. And here's a gleeful. What, when they surf like this, they're feeding on some migrating fish that's just under the surface, and they're going after the fish. And they rise up and they dive down the gulf. And here they're the seal there, the seal there. They go in the herd. You know, I think there were eight seals in this particular group. And they come down to make a big splash. That's what it means to make a splash. And that's the alpha male. So that's the landscape of nursing mothers in early June all along this one ledge, and this is the only ledge that has a wonderful covering of rockweed on the lower portion, which makes it easier to slide, so they don't dry out, slide into the water and escape. And you can see the little guys are light colored like that at right angles to the female. Uh, That's Cadillac Mountain, Door Mountain, Sargent Mountain. And I took these with this telephoto lens from Bering Island. So I try to discourage people from going out and trying to take pictures of these guys at this season because that would really disrupt them. So I always say I had a thousand millimeter lens and so forth. And predators, are there, are we going to talk about that at all? Are, are there any? They're pretty safe up here, I tell you. Um, I think that's one reason they like these warmer, shallower bays. There's not a lot of shipping. <laughs> if you can take a hint. <laughs> but I find, I gave a talk on Sorrento about Great Blue Heron, and I said, please don't come to the island to visit the herons because it disturbs them and rises up and burn calories that they have a hard time getting. The very next day there was a party. They hadn't been at the talk, but they were told about the talk and nobody imparted my caveat, my warning. So I went over and gave them a stern talking to them. <laughs> they were supposed to intuit my telepathy, my message. And this is the pupping ledge, uh, and I've always counted them, but I really wanted to know, so one thing I did was I did a survey, but you can see there are quite a few. They, uh, 
upon this end they like that. And here they like this is the maternity ward, they space themselves out intuitively, and then when they're not nursing, they kind of gather up there for social contact. And it's different every time you look at them. And these are older, and they're all uniformly darker. So you can see, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, Eight, nine, there's probably 25 seals in that picture. Hint, hint. So in taking my pictures, in counting them, I would cruise along my boat, because if I stop, they will all dive into the water, so I have to keep moving. So I take the pictures at a different angle, and then I get a bunch of pictures like this and try to make sense out of it. So, are these similar <coughs> groups, and how can I figure out how many are in this particular group? He told them not to bid, right? What's that? He told them not to bid. Don't bid while you take the pictures. <laughs> but you know, they don't speak English very well. <laughs> so, I figure that one is that one. And, you know, I just work very gradually down. And that one is that one. And... It just takes a lot of comparison. Right. But you see how they've displaced it's coming from a different angle, they look different. So there I can pretty much figure out how many are in that group. Is this a different group? Well, that's that. So once I go through this arduous process of comparing, then I can start counting and find who I can't see in one image that I can in the next. And it becomes possible. So this is a ledge with the same ledge taken very quickly, but there's a seal there that isn't in the other two pictures. The seal in the water that is in the other two pictures. There's a seal there, but it isn't there in the third picture. So, this just shows some of the difficulties, and there's a margin of error in any estimate I'm going to make of how many there are on the bay. There's a different grouping. There's one group of seal rocks up in Creasy Cove that huge numbers of seals haul out on. They love to bask in the sunlight. That's one of their expert skills. And this is the same group from different angles, but it doesn't look much like the same. So we try to identify that one. See, I'm at a totally different angle, but that's the same seal. And once you, you identify, once you connect them, you can see that it's the same seal. So then I start counting, but, you know, guys like this, they're free roaming, you can't tell where they're going to go. So even up close with just a few seals, What do you think? How many are there? A bunch. <laughs> six. Six. And are they pups or are they adults? Some pups. That looks like a pup to me. And I Yes, that one is too, but I'm not sure. And here's the same game. How many seals? One, two, three. Is that a seal? I can't tell. Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Is that part?
tired of this still? I don't know. So I have pages of photographs with little scratches and marks on them and secret code. <laughs> And look how different they appear. Same species, but one is light, one is dark, one has light spots on dark, one has dark spots on light. Do uh, you know Gail McCullough, anybody? She monitors seals in the Skillings River, and she identifies them by their coloration, and she knows them personally and gives them names. I haven't gotten to that advanced stage. Uh, so I know they're light and dark, and their faces, and this one is smiling. Is it not smiling? It's looking pretty content. You can almost come to a conclusion that they double the population every year, but in reality, it's well, reality and, well they could, because most of the groups that we have in Dalton Bay is female. Steve, when exactly is the hopping season when it's when it's worst to get too <coughs> close to them? Pardon me? When is the time that it's the worst to get too close to them, to, to be especially careful? Well, early in the year when the pups are born, which are born in May and June, early June, that's the worst time. That's when those pictures were taken from the island. Not, not quite. And then you get into July and August, they're still around and they're much more tolerant of mm -hmm. disturbance. And that's when I took these. Ones. And I took these when I was touring the bay looking for horseshoe crabs. So I was always on the lookout for mm -hmm. doing two things at once. So in the wintertime, that could only be one seal. Well, that's the alpha male riding on his barge like Cleopatra down the along with the seagull. And it's funny, I say it's funny, this ice sometimes slopes and the seal tenses its body muscles so it won't slip. And you can see it <laughs> stretching its muscles. Here it's totally relaxed, but it gets more tense and a tail will come up and it arches its back so it won't slide off the Right. Okay, there's an air hole. That's a deep breath uh, preparing for a dive. Here's a merganser pair in the background. And that's only about 12 feet long or so. And it's the only free air access, you know, in half a mile. So they have to be able to know where the next hole is. Will they come up on the ice when it's like that or not? Um, they generally don't. Um, they generally take a piece that's floating around, a piece of ice, but not the solid part. So that's a family picture. Mom and child. And I'd say that they're both well fed. And, you know, there are alewives and a variety of fish in the bay that they eat. So after they pop, then they eat the fish. And that's, I, I came down to go in my boat, and that guy was between my boat and the water. And obviously very young, just hatched, or just not hatched, birthed. So he swam into the water, I disturbed him. We crawled on, on that rock. And it looks, you know, kind of like a dog or something. It looks like a mammal. You can see its connection where it's got alternating legs, one reaching up and one pushing from behind. Huh. Oh, finally, let's go and take a nap. Mm -hmm. So, I called college of the Atlantic, and they told me 
put it in a box and we'll, de- we'll rehydrate it and send it to Boston to figure out why it was abandoned. Because I listened to the plenty of calls of this for four days and there was no mother that appeared and I was very vigilant. So out of desperation, I, you know, out of empathy for the seal, I called and Gordon, uh, who was it? Diver Ed was mm-hmm. at COA, and he was handling the SEAL rescue operation. And so I took the SEAL in a box over to him. He put it in the bathtub and gave it water right away because the big danger is dehydration if they lose uh, moisture. And he could tell, we could see from the eyes, it's dehydrated. The mm-hmm. eyes are not glassy. So that's a dangerous sign. And then once it, he rehydrated it, he put it in a cat carrier and sent it by airplane down to the Boston Aquarium. They used to go, or maybe that was afterwards, they used to go to Southern Maine. I volunteered with Allied Whale. And we'd be called to go pick them up, and a couple of us would go, and you burrito them. You could what? Burrito them. Oh. You wrap them up in the towel, like a oh. burrito. Yeah. And when you pick them up, it's like having this wonderful little creature, but you can't talk. They don't want it to know human voice. They don't want it to know imprinting. And you die into it. And it was two women that were running a pen from COA. And we took them to their house. And they had a place, a shed out back that was set up. And we learned how to draw blood, which I didn't like. Wow, you were trained. And, yeah, we learned how to feed them with the two, to two feed them with the formula. But um, all the time you did it, you tried to wear gloves or you tried to keep them burritoed. Or, it, was, it was an amazing The claws on that flipper there, if it race across your arm, boy, you've got streaks of blood. So you have to wear gloves. Or, I was going to ask you, how did you pick up the baby? Was he very cautiously? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Behind, you know, on the back, behind where I couldn't reach him. Right. And this is a different one. And yeah. Such an innocent, trusting, questioning face. Yeah, you know, we relate to mammals. To me, that's the idyllic scene. Oh. I want to live in Franklin, oh. Maine, that looks like that. Isn't that paradise? Yeah. So now we go on to bald eagles and we end with a splash. <laughs>